Welcome to SysEng Quick. My name is John, and today we'll be building a dev container for our Ansible tutorial work. In the last episode, we made a virtual environment to run Ansible. I've gone ahead and removed that. I ran the commands deactivate and then rm-rf.vm. So we're back to good in our project folder. I've got my repo open in VS Code, so let's start by making our dev container. Make sure you have the dev containers extension installed. If you don't, go to extensions, search for dev containers from Microsoft, and make sure to install that. Once you have it installed, we can open the command palette with Control Shift P or on a Mac, Command Shift P, and we'll add dev container configuration files. We'll add the configuration to the workspace. We're going to search for Python 3 and use the Python 3 dev containers. We're going to pick 3.12 bookworm for our version. And we don't need any features, so we'll just select OK. There we go. We have our template for our dev container. Let's make a few small changes. Let's change the name of our dev container from Python 3 to be Ansible Tutorial 2024. Now, we're not going to use this image like it is. We want to start from this image and add a few things. We're going to need to make a Docker file. Let's go back to our file viewer and make a new file, Docker file in our .dev container folder. Now, I'm going to go ahead and copy this image that Microsoft helpfully provides for us and we'll say from this image, we're going to install a few more things. I like managing my Python dependencies with poetry. So let's start by installing that. We can use the run command and we'll do run python 3-m pip install poetry. I'm going to pin it to a specific version because that way I'll know my poetry works. And I'm going to say tilde equals 1.8.2. This, I think, is the most current version of Poetry, but if there's a newer one that's compatible, it should install that instead. So, that looks good for a start. Let's go ahead and save our Docker file, and we'll go back to our devcontainer.json. We're going to comment out this image property and replace it with a build object. Inside here, we're going to say we have a new property called Dockerfile, which is just our Docker file. And then I'm going to set the Docker build context to be the parent directory. We'll see why a little bit later. Let's go ahead and save that. And now we can build and open our dev container. I'll open the command palette and choose rebuild and reopen in container. Okay, everything looks good. I think we have a terminal in our new container now. If I open a terminal, yes, our prompt has changed. Do we have the right version of Python? Yes, Python 3.12. Do we have the right version of Poetry? Yes, everything looks good. So let's create a Poetry configuration file. We'll do Poetry init. It's going to ask us some questions. Our package name, I don't want that to be Ansible. That would conflict with the Ansible package in PyPy. So let's just make it the same as our dev container. We'll say Ansible Tutorial 2024. There we go. Version doesn't really matter. Description, again, doesn't matter. Author, me, sure, that's fine. Our license is GPL3. Compatible Python versions, 3.12, seems fine. Would I like to define my main dependencies interactively? Let's say yes. And I'm going to add Ansible Core. So I want to do Ansible-Core. It offers Ansible Core. That sounds good to me. And the version is 2.16. So let's say tilde equals 2.16.6, I think, is the most current version. We'll go ahead and say enter. We don't want any more packages right now. And I'm going to say no to adding any development dependencies right now. So this all looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and say yes. And let's see if this actually works. We'll run poetry install. And it appears to be installing things. 
it did give us a warning that if we only want to use poetry for dependency management, we can add a flag to our TOML file. Well, that is what I want to use it for. So let's go change this file. And let's say package-mode equals false. We'll save that. And we'll run poetry install again. Okay, everything looks good now. Do we have Ansible? We'll do poetry run dash dash Ansible dash dash version. Yes, we have Ansible core 2.16. So that appears to be working. However, once I exit this container, I won't have my poetry environment installed anymore. We're going to need to add that to our Docker file. Let's go back into that file and let's make a few changes. First, we're going to need to copy over our poetry.log and pyproduct.toml files. So let's make a workdir and we're going to say it's slash workspaces slash Ansible, mirroring the directory VS Code set up for us. Then we're going to need to copy over those files. So we'll do copy poetry.log pyproject.toml and we'll put dot for the current directory, which is going to be slash workspaces slash Ansible. Now I want to make sure that the VS Code user owns these files. So let's do run chown dash capital R VS Code colon VS Code slash workspaces. Finally, we'll switch into being the VS Code user. We'll do that with the user command, switching to VS Code. And now we can do run poetry install. And that should install all of our dependencies. But there's one more thing I'd like to do. But let's see if this works real quick. Let's go ahead and bring up the command palette and we'll do rebuild container. In the log, we can see that poetry ran, so everything should be okay. Let's go ahead and check that out. We'll open up a terminal and do poetry run dash dash ansible dash dash version. And there we go, ansible core 2.16. Okay, now the poetry environment is a little bit hard to predict. If we do poetry end list, we're going to see there's lots of poetry environments. What we have right here is Ansible Tutorial 2024, this weird name, dash pi 3.12. Well, I want VS Code to know where the Python binaries are. We'll need that for the Ansible extension and for Python. So let's go ahead and see if we can find a way to get this to be in a more predictable place. We could do a symlink to that. So if we symlinked tilde cache pi project virtual ems ansible terminal to say vn, that would be a more predictable place to find our virtual environment. Let's see if we can make a command that would do that in a more automated fashion. First of all, we need to get this name somehow. So why don't we say poetry env list and then we'll pass that, we'll pipe that into head dash n1 and we'll pipe that into cut, we'll give it a delimiter of the space and we'll say it's the first field. That's right, I need to be in the correct directory. That's okay, we will be in that workspace directory just there. So let's try that again. So there we go. Okay, that gives us our funny name. Okay, so we can save that as a variable. So let's say vn equals dollar open side parenthesis, and we will go ahead and put that command in there, close the parenthesis, and we'll do double ampersand, and we'll say ln dash s tilde slash, and what was that path? It was dot cache slash pi poetry slash virtual ems slash now we want our variable that's going to be slash vn and we're going to symlink that to tilde slash vn okay that looks like it worked so let's copy that command over here we're going to go ahead and copy this whole command and we'll say run that command oops that didn't work try this there we go that looks like it should work 
Okay, now we have a predictable location for our virtual environment. So what can we do with that? Well, for starters, let's go back to our dev container and set up some default settings. To do that, we'll add a new object. It's the customizations object. So we can go uncomment that or just make another one. It won't really matter. And our customizations are going to be for VS Code. And we want to add some extensions. So we'll add that. And we want to add some VS Code settings. So the first setting we want to do is python.defaultinterpreterpath. And rather than being Python, it's going to be tilde slash vm slash bin slash python3. We also want to install a few extensions we don't have. Maybe we want one for working with TOML files. That could be pretty useful. Let's go ahead and search for an extension that does that. Let's look for TOML. Here's one, even better TOML. That'll work. Let's go ahead and click the gear icon and copy the extension ID. Go back to here and let's add that to our list of extensions we want to add. There's also an Ansible extension, so let's add that. Here we go, here's Ansible, click the gear, copy extension the ID, and we'll add that to our list. Okay, that's pretty good for now. There is one more setting that we can add for the Ansible extension. And it's called ansible.python.default, no, interpreter path. And again, it's the same one as our other one. So slash vm bin python3. Put a comma there, make sure it's valid JSON. And that all looks pretty good. So let's see if this works and we have our new extensions. We'll go ahead and hit save here. And we're being offered to rebuild our Docker file. If you don't see that pop up, just bring up the command palette and do rebuild container from here. Okay, and you can see we do have our extensions installed. We've got the Ansible one and even better TOML. So now we have syntax highlighting in our TOML file. And we'll have some good support for Ansible files when we do that in the future. Future John here. I made a couple of quick tweaks to the dev container configuration. In the Docker file, I added this link line to make sure that git bash completion works. In the devcontainer.json file, we're now grabbing the image from the GitHub container registry. I've made a GitHub action to push that automatically. I've added quite a few extensions that I feel are useful for Ansible. We'll get into what they do in the future. And I made a few tweaks to the default settings. So setting the default formatters for JSON and Markdown, um, a few things for Python, um, formatting on save, file association, just a couple minor tweaks, mostly cosmetic things. They're just kind of handy to have. In pyproduct.toml, I added Ansible lint. This is a linter for Ansible code. Very useful. Um, the annoying thing is that you have to set it up this way in Poetry because Poetry can't handle what they did to make this to get this not to install on Windows. So this is how you have to do it to make Ansible Lint install with Poetry. So you add this line here, run Poetry Lock, and then Poetry install. And finally, um, here is the GitHub action that builds the dev container. It does it every time we push to main or I do it manually. So it's pretty simple, runs on Ubuntu. We've got permissions to push packages, check out the repo, log in to the container registry, set up docker buildx. We get metadata, which is just the latest and the SHA-1 tag. And finally, we push things to the GitHub container registry, building it from Dockerfile in the .dev container directory. And we're caching to GitHub Actions. Okay, that's everything that I changed after I stopped recording. Okay, you can see on our terminal, we're also already in our virtual environment. So I don't need to run poetry run anymore. I can just do ansible dash dash version. And we're already good to go. This is a good wrapping up point for today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.